folks. Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. Thank you for taking the time to check out today's Tips and Tricks video. So folks, today I want to do a, uh, a video on exactly how I kind of set up my, uh, my, my sequencing whenever I'm getting started with a new song. Now, as you can see here, I have the first line on my uh, X lights line, my first timing line that is. And you'll see this cult mapping. Now, it, it's inconsequential what you call it, but I like to set up the sequence ahead of time before I start sequencing to, to kind of see where and how the song flows throughout the entire uh, it throughout, throughout the entire thing. And what I want to do today is show you how I kind of quote unquote map it out so that it's a little bit easier for me to think about whenever I'm sequencing through the entire song. So before we get started, folks, I want to tell you about our awesome PPD sequence club. When you join the club, you get one sequence each month with your monthly membership payment. You get four preset effects that work really, really great on their own, but they also work phenomenally well with the new kaleidoscope effect as well as the warp effect. So keep that in mind. You also get access to the monthly vendor special page. We have a number of affiliates that offer specials to our sequence club members through the vendor special page. And those people are Boscoyo Studios, Crocket Fantasy Lights, Wired Watts, Pixel Sequencing, also Scott LED, uh, cloudy air Christmas light con controllers as well, and a number of other ones you need to check out the PPD Sequence Club, get in on some of those specials, and you also save a ton of money. Some people have saved up to thousands of dollars on their pixel sequence or pixel purchases as far as that goes. So with that in mind, folks, I want to get started. And the first thing I want to show you today is uh, th there's a couple little options in our uh, audio and our settings that kind of help me when I start out the sequence. So whenever I first do a sequence, when I first listen to a song, I listen to the entire song from start to finish. And why I do this is I kind of, in my head, I start mapping out what parts of the sequence there are. So if you, if you are trying to sequence, it's easier to break a sequence down into smaller bits. Whenever you look at, like this song, it's two minutes and 40 seconds. When you look at a two minute and 40 second song or a three minute or a five minute song, and you say, wow, I've got to sequence that, that can be quite overwhelming. So to reduce that, down we we kind of break it down we make it a smaller animal and two functions kind of will help us along our path number one under the settings menu we have what's called the timing declick mode now we have two options we have edit text or we have play timing what this means is basically whenever you have a timing mark or a timing set um on a, that you've placed, you can either double click on the timing, you can on, on that specific timing area, and it will either play the timing, or if you double click, it will open the edit text box. So um, in my, in, in, in the way that I work with X lights, I usually uh, have the settings so that whenever I double click, the timing double click automatically plays that specific timing. Now there's a lot of reasons why you would use that. One of them is when you're doing singing faces, you could double click on the individual word. And if it falls in between that word in that waveform, then you know you have it lined up correctly. And uh, also if you just click double click on it, it plays that phrase or wherever you're working at. Um, and that's kind of nice when you're reviewing what you've already sequenced. The edit text mode, on the other hand, would, if I selected that, would, if I double click on it, it allows me to go in and edit the label track. Now, um, it, it doesn't mean that you have to go into the settings menu every time just to switch that. Because if I go in here to timing, de-click and put it on play mode, I can double click. So you can see it automatically plays it. So what we end up doing what we end up doing is there is a function that switches this mode for us mechanically. And how that is, is with the shift key. So right now it's in play mode. It's in de-click play mode. Okay, so I just double clicked on it. It played it. If I hold the shift key down, now it will let me edit the track. So I use this an incredibly large amount of times and there's a this is a very significant addition and in my opinion because i do use it on every sequence and if you if you do use it for singing faces this is a, also a wonderful addition because like i said if you break down those phonemes then you can 
Uh, you break down the words, it carries the word down. You can double click on the word and you can spread it out to the exact area and so forth. But that's not what today's video is on, but it, the functionality is there for it. So that's the first thing that's nice that I want to show you. The second thing that is nice is the audio settings. So whenever I am doing this part of my video, uh, of my uh, sequence setup, what I'm doing is I actually put this on play 1.5 faster. That way I literally, I literally don't have to listen to the song for two minutes and 40 seconds. If you listen to a song that you're going to sequence, chances are you know what that sequence entails and how much work is inside it. You can... You, you already know where the, the beginning is and so forth. So if, if you play it fast, you can play it fast and you can set your timing marks and then go back, slow it down, and you can exactly set where you need these to start. So that, those are the two kind of things that I use a lot to help me at the very beginning. Now, um, whenever it comes to the actual setup, I actually, uh, I, now I, I don't want, I'm, this isn't meant as an insult to anybody, and, uh, but I have, I have some experience in music, and some folks will have a little bit more trouble or more challenged with understanding uh, different phrases of music. So we, there are different types of, uh, of phrases within music. There's usually the chorus, which is the part that repeats and sounds the same in different parts throughout the song. There is also the verse, which is like, um, uh, like Silent Night has three different verses. There's three different uh, sets of words that go with it, but it repeats back to the beginning and uses the same melody throughout it. The The idea, though, is, is that the verse changes uh, typically from verse 1 to verse 2 to verse 3. Uh, it doesn't have to. Sometimes it can be the same. But then the chorus usually repeats and is very, very similar from each iteration. And the chorus is the most common part or the common uh, item that, that you'll hear over and over again. So what I like to do is I'll map out the intro. If there is uh, a chorus first or sometimes the verses first, I'll mark those out with the timing marks. And then I will go through and mark out the chorus and the verses later on. And then, then there's some other phrases. Now, once again, um, musically inclined, there, there's things that we call bridges. A bridge kind of connects two different types of musical phrases. And then I have a reprise, which is like the replaying of something. And usually it's a chorus, but it's the, the reprise is presented just slightly different than you heard it in the chorus. So uh, in this specific song, I the way that I mapped it out that helped me make logical sense to me was a, it was a chorus, a verse one, a chorus, a verse two, and then we had a bridge. So it, it was just a little bit different. This bridge just didn't fit exactly like the chorus did. It didn't fit like the verse did, but it sounded very similar to them. But it, it connected the verse with the end of it, which was the reprise. I call it a reprise because it revisited it. So I know we're playing a little fast. And... Uh, Basically, the idea behind this is whenever I go in and I begin sequencing, I only look at one sequence area at a time, and that's where I'll usually work with. So whenever I begin getting started with sequencing, that's one of the places that I, I, I like to work on the chorus because usually the chorus is, is, replaced, uh, re, is used throughout the sequence, and it makes it so much easier for me whenever I am sequencing to know, okay, I'm in the chorus. This is what they expect to kind of happen during the chorus, and then I work through that. Sometimes I'll use some of the sequencing from this area, and I'll use it in some areas for the chorus. Sometimes I'll use the same sequencing in the verse areas because it fits the areas very well, but a lot of times I just end up resequencing the choruses depending on what the song sounds like. If there's a key change, my goodness, then there's there's some different layers and, and, and things that you can do with your colors and so forth that really set it apart that make it look a little different and people notice that it's different. So. That's today's tips and tricks for you folks. I know it's a lot of rambling and I know it was a lot of trying to explain, but uh, uh, I think that it's kind of important to kind of hit the, hit the nail on the head as far as sequencing goes. 
um, and how you can kind of break down a sequence and really kind of get one hammered out within a couple weeks. For some people, it's a little harder to sequence, and maybe this will be something that will help you as you move forward into your sequencing endeavors. So, folks, if you like the video, thanks for joining us. If you like the video, make sure you hit the big thumbs up uh, and also hit the big red subscribe button if you haven't done yet. So, hit the notification, the bell for notifications for every video that we pop up. Some of them don't get posted into the uh, into the Facebook groups, so you may. Get, might get notified. Also, uh, all of our videos are found on pixelprodisplays.com and you can sign up for a free membership and view any of those videos at any time that you like. There is a huge, huge repository of information on X lights and not just that, but also in general, the lighting hobby as it sits. So thank you folks for joining us. We will see you in the next video. Down through the chimney with those and me. Sam, and every time it rains, it rains.